So if you notice people outside walking around staring at their phones more than usual, chances are they're playing a game called Pokemon Go. You got to catch one right now. I got to catch one right now. It's, a, it's so this is a high level. It's a bee drill. But when you put a lure, Pokemon get attracted to the area and so do people. So everyone's right now is in this park because there's three lures going off at once. At its core, the game lets players catch monsters using the real world as its game world. And before you dismiss it as just another fad, consider this. The game has given shares in Nintendo a huge boost. Since it came out last Thursday, the company's stock is up 36%, adding nearly $10 billion Canadian to its market capitalization. It's not even officially available in Canada yet, but that hasn't stopped Pokemon fans from finding a way to get the game on their phones. Among the cast of characters on this program, guess which one is already playing this game? Graham Williams, our tech guy, joins us, and, and the game's only been out for days, and yet you're already all over it. I am, yeah. I'm, I'm currently level three, so I just I didn't start too long ago, but uh, on the way over here, I caught three Pokemon, which I'm very happy about. You are a grown man. What's the appeal? Uh, the appeal is really to catch them all. I mean, the, the idea is behind Pokemon, it's been 20 years that we've been playing this game. And so going out and actually being able to catch Pokemon for real in the real world, it's an incredibly cool thing. So this is augmented reality, which we've seen a little bit of it, uh, but, but explain what that means. Well, augmented reality, essentially you have reality and the augmentation is a digital layer that's put over that by a device. So that could be your computer. In this case, it's your phone and your phone's camera is capturing the real world out there and putting these Pokemon into that space. So you look up and maybe there's a Squirtle at your desk or a Bulbasaur out on your street. <laughs> this stuff just rolls off your tongue in a way that alarms me a little bit. Um, you're very thoughtful about tech stuff, so let me ask you, what do you, why do you think this has been so successful in such a short period of time? Well, it's successful because the groundwork was actually done by another game. Niantic Labs was originally a subsidiary of Google, and they've been spun off since, but they had a game called Ingress, and Ingress is played by 7 million people around the world. It's a game where you go out and you try to capture territory in your cities. The cool thing about this is that people were nominating landmarks and uh, different monuments as places of interest in Ingress. All of that data has been brought over to Pokemon Go, so the game was actually fully built out from that standpoint from years of work from crowdsourced people like you and me. And so I've heard from some people who uh, have been going all around the Lower Mainland this weekend trying to get to these points to, to advance the game. You said you've already caught, what did you already catch? Uh, on the way over I caught a Vulpix and uh, what else, a Zubat on the way over, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, and so have you been like walking places that normally you wouldn't walk in order to play this game? Absolutely, I went out for lunch today and instead of taking the, the short way around, I actually took a trip through the park because there were two poke, poke stops and I caught a Pokemon on the way through there as well. Yeah, just how, how big is this game? Well, you might be wondering in this program as you see the writers in the background what they do while I'm on the air. We'll take a look at Matt, uh, who not surprising to me at all is playing a video game uh, as we go. And, uh, and Graham, there's one way to look at this, the, the explosive growth, the number of people who are playing and think that this is going to be the beginning of, of augmented reality games that everybody's playing. On the other hand, I think of things like Farmville that seemed so hot at the time, but then kind of diminished in popularity. What, what, what's the... Does this have legs? Is this going to be successful for a while, do you think? I think it does. The thing with Farmville is it was the same thing over and over again, and there was definitely money gates in between you and being able to play the game and, and have more fun. With Pokemon Go, the, the barrier between you and having more fun is actually getting up out of your couch and going out there and doing something. So this is not just, you know, good, good fun, but it's actually good exercise as well. There's also a lot of growth that you can do here. There are 151 Pokemon in the game right now, but there are over 600 in the Pokemon Pantheon. So there's a lot of things that Niantic can do to add more Pokemon into the game. There are also po Pokemon events that could happen. This happened in Ingress, where they basically had one day or one week events where cool things could happen bringing people together. I think that's what's going to give the game legs. But every time there's a new step in technology or games, there are people that talk about the dark side, the possibility, and there's some stories out there, some are true, some probably aren't true, of people being drawn in and robbed because of they're playing this game and bad people are manipulating it. How concerned should we be? Uh, I think you should really practice to uh, save Pokemon Go wherever you go. Can you so believe you just said that? I think I can. Uh, what I would recommend is, you know, obviously anyone of a younger age should probably be with a parent or guardian. And it's a social game. Go with other people. Don't go by yourself. If you're going out to play Pokemon Go at 2 o'clock in the morning in the dark side of town, that's probably a bad idea. So stay safe and play Pokemon Go with your friends. I feel like you should be with a parent or guardian. Thank you very much. <laughs>